All right, we're here in my tiny indoor worm bin and I'm looking around on the sides and I'm seeing a little bit of debris. So either the moisture level in here was such that they didn't have a problem coming up or there may be something going on in here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're gonna be checking on three things in here. First, we're gonna check on the last feeding, which had a lot of shredded veggies from my juicer. It also had some baby bok choy, some sweet potato chunks, tomato, apple core, that kind of thing. And then we're also gonna check on the burlap sack, which we put some broccoli shreds in. And then finally, we're gonna give them a new feeding and I'm gonna introduce some more fruit since we got the mites and potworms under control. So let's go ahead and dig into this feeding right here. And last time we also put the bed on top because I forgot to put it down first and we're gonna go to 100% that spun bedding as this bin gets closer and closer to being all castings. In fact, this bin looks like it's at least at the halfway point, maybe even beyond 50-50 castings to bedding ratio as I'm kind of mixing things around here. I think that's where we're at. And here is a banana stock that we constantly run into. Let me go ahead and just dive right in. Now it's been nine days, so I don't expect to see any of the food left in here. Maybe that apple core, which is slower to eat food. But what we are seeing is some really good big worms. And these are all red wigglers. And you can see just a deep color through this one right here. Pretty cool. All right, let's keep going through the feeding zone. And yep, this these are some rich castings. This is pretty moist and actually really good moisture, maybe slightly more moist than I typically have, but it is, it's really feeling good. It's crumbly, but also kind of sticks together, if that makes sense. It's one way to check the moisture level. And then, yeah, look at all these worms, just <laughs> all over the place. No big worm ball or centralized worm ball, but we started with 500 and they definitely seem to be all throughout at least the center area here. So yeah, looking great, looking great. All right, here's that burlap sack. And again, no, I don't see any penetration. Maybe maybe some of the holes of the burlap are bigger than they were before. In fact, this worm seems to have one end. Nope, <laughs> I thought maybe he was stuck halfway in, halfway out, but he wasn't, or she wasn't. But this burlap sack is taking a little bit longer than we thought. I think it's already about 36 days or so. And inside here, we put in some broccoli, and I'm pretty sure there's not any broccoli in there. I'm gonna give you guys a close-up real quick. I think I saw a couple worms in there. So they've eaten all the food out of there, and I will Again, stuff some food in here, probably some strawberries. But I did have a commenter mention that they put burlap within the bin and it does seem to get eaten. So there may be something on this burlap or maybe it's not true burlap that is the reason for it taking longer. But I'm gonna set it to the side and then we'll just quickly go through the front and then to the back and just kind of mix everything up and see how everything's doing. Make sure we don't have any matted or fermented areas. So let me do that real quick. All right, I just got a bunch of worms here, so I have to stop and take a look at them. I'm really impressed with how quickly this just turned the corner and we're at, you know, 50-50 or maybe even more castings to bedding. And it's been 90 days, so that does make sense that we're, we're getting closer to the finish line for sure. And you can see one of the reasons why I'm not gonna add more of this bulky cardboard bedding is because it just becomes unruly to try and get into the bin. So that's another reason I'm just gonna go to the spun bedding from here on out. Aha, it looks like in this bracelet packaging, and maybe this is why this wasn't breaking down, there is a sticker where it says one pound. I guess that's for the one pound of plastic they pull out for purchasing the bracelets here. So we have found a sticker. Good job, worms, for not eating the sticker. I'm gonna take that out. And then I'll just rip up the rest of this. That's, pre that's pretty funny. They avoided this cardboard that was surrounding the sticker. So good job, worms, finding that sticker for me. All right, so now I'm just gonna set up a feeding zone. And I gotta tell you, having my hands in here, this feels so good. These castings and bedding feel so good. I'm just so proud of this little bin. Let me go ahead and put in the bedding. And we're just gonna use that pulverized drink tray slash egg cartons that I've been using. And that 
just helps me not to add more bulk. This is super, super shredded and has tons of surface area. So the worm certainly can eat this apart really quick. So there we go with that. Now here's what we're gonna put in for their feeding. We're gonna put in a whole, well, I guess half banana, but it is super mushy inside. And I think over here it had already molded a little bit, but this has been frozen and then thawed out. And then I'm gonna put in the rest of our juicing broccoli and kale. This is the part that gets ejected at the other side of the juicer. And then I'll give them a little head start by squeezing out some of the banana, but that's going to go right in the center. And we'll see if they tunnel in through the peel or break into the peel some other way. And then within this burlap sack is where we're going to put all the strawberries. And I'll put in some of this green stuff too. And we'll just kind of set that to the side right there. And of course, I forgot to put this <laughs> bedding from the top down on the bottom, but one of these days I'll remember correctly. We'll go with our coffee grounds, which are just another food source for them. And then our grit, which is pulverized eggshells and the worms have gizzards. They use it in their digestion to grind things up. So this is a fantastic bin and you know, they're relatively cheap. It's three gallons. And I've got some affiliate links if you want to price out the different bins, that kind of thing. And if you enjoy this video, go ahead and hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Hit subscribe. I've got two other bins that I follow and a cocoon nursery, and I've got playlists for each of them. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.